So in reaction to recent incidents that occurred in Buffalo, New York, in Uvalde, Texas, Congress has now introduced a comprehensive gun control bill, which aims to limit the right to keep and bear arms in the U.S. even more. So let's talk about this. But real quick, before you jump into this video, if you think we don't need more gun control, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. Also, I want to mention that you can now pick up channel merch. As you can see, I'm wearing one of my channel t-shirts right here. This one comes in two colors, and then we have two other styles. So if you're interested, you can check that out using the link down below, and that really does help to support the channel, and you can get a piece of the channel merchandise for yourself. So like I said in the intro, in reaction to the recent incidents in Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas, there have been renewed calls for more gun control laws at a state level and also at the federal level. In prior videos, we talked about how the state of New York introduced a bill mirroring the Texas abortion law in a way that would allow private lawsuits against gun manufacturers. Then we talked about how there was a new federal bill that was introduced to require a federal license that everyone must have if they want to purchase and possess a firearm. Then we also talked about how the state of New York introduced a new bill which sought to ban the purchase and possession of body armor. Well, now a comprehensive gun control package has been introduced at the national level. The bill we'll be talking about in this video is called the Protecting Our Kids Act, and it was introduced by Nadler, Thompson, and Jackson Lee. This bill introduces multiple gun control measures in one single bill, and it includes things from age-based firearms restrictions, safe storage requirements, ghost gun and 3D printed firearms bans, and it would even codify the ATF's bump stock ban and even also includes a magazine capacity restriction. So let's talk about what all this bill does. So the first section of this bill deals with the prohibition on selling semi-automatic centerfire rifles and shotguns to anyone under the age of 21. It states that an FFL is prohibited from selling any firearm and ammunition to anyone who the licensee knows or has reasonable cause to believe has not obtained 21 years of age. That includes any semi-automatic centerfire rifle or semi-automatic centerfire shotgun that has a capacity to hold more than five rounds. And that includes any individual the licensee knows or has reasonable cause to believe is not 21 years of age. So again, like I said, an age-based restriction. However, under this section, it states that the 18 to 20 year olds would still be permitted to purchase non-semi-automatic centerfire rifles or shotguns, but again, they cannot be semi-automatic. This section of the bill seeks to directly challenge a recent ruling by the Ninth Circuit in the Jones v. Bonta case. In this case, the Ninth Circuit found that under the text, history, and tradition of the Second Amendment, 18 to 20 year olds have a right to these types of arms and that our nation would not exist without 18 to 20 year olds being able to bear these types of arms. But of course, this bill seeks to prohibit 18 to 20 year olds and those just general civilians out there from having access to these types of arms, all while also exempting the same type of arms and their use by 18 to 20 year olds who serve in the military or are law enforcement officers. So essentially it's safe to have these types of arms to use them for the government's bidding, but it's unsafe for the average 18 to 20 year old to have access to them. This bill then goes on to prohibit actions that are already illegal and punishable under federal law. The bill makes it illegal to engage in straw purchases, which we already know is illegal. And then it also goes on to say that you cannot engage in gun trafficking, which we already know is illegal, but they just decide to completely do something that's redundant in this bill. Then this bill goes on to discuss untraceable firearms. Under this section, it includes a new definition of manufacturing firearms. It includes assembling a functional firearm or molding, machining, or 3D printing a frame or receiver, but does not include making or fitting special barrels, stocks, or trigger mechanisms. It also includes the term ghost gun into the federal law to mean a firearm including a frame or receiver that lacks a unique serial number engraved or cast on the frame or receiver by a licensed manufacturer or importer. It then goes on to make it unlawful for any person to manufacture, sell, offer to sell, transfer, purchase, or to receive a so-called ghost gun. Essentially, this bill aims to create a general ban on 80 percenters in the U.S. along with a ban on 3D printed firearms. How they will regulate 3D printed firearms, who knows? This bill really doesn't indicate how they're going to do that, but it does say that they're going to apply this whole 80%er ban in a way that you could transfer the 80%ers as long as the FFL has them serialized prior to the sale or transfer. So this seems to be a way that they're going to do some sort of legislative codification of the ATF's new rule on frames receivers. But this bill doesn't stop there. Then it goes on to talk about a national safe storage component where it will be unlawful for a person to store or keep any firearm in a resident in a way that a minor is likely to gain access to it or in a way a prohibited person may also gain access to that firearm. To avoid this, a person will need to keep all firearms in a secure gun storage device or use a safety device on the firearm. If someone is found to have violated this section, 
then they can be charged $500 per violation. And also those firearms that are found kind of in violation of this section of the bill could then be seized and forfeited to the law enforcement agencies. And then this bill finalizes itself with two major bans. First, there is a codification on the ATF's bump stock ban. In this section, it creates an amendment to the GCA to include bump stocks into the GCA and NFA's restrictions. Then the bill moves on to a ban on so-called large capacity magazine feeding devices. Under the bill, a large capacity magazine will mean a magazine, belt, drum, feed strip, helical feeding device, or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner that has an overall capacity of, or that can be readily restored, changed, or converted to accept more than 10 rounds of ammunition. And then of course they go on to say, well, that doesn't include 22 caliber rimfire ammunition because for whatever reason, they always exempt 22 caliber rimfire. Under this section, it states that it shall be unlawful for a person to import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce, a large capacity ammunition feeding device. It then goes on to state that the prohibition shall not apply to the possession of any large capacity magazine feeding device, otherwise lawfully possessed on or before the date of enactment of this subsection. So this bill aims to create a national ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, while also grandfathering in the already possessed magazines. So this is similar to what we've seen other states like the state of California do, where they ban so-called large capacity magazines or magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, but they say those magazines that were already in your possession are grandfathered in. We've also seen the state of Washington do this recently, and it's a very similar scheme, but instead of just applying it at the state level, they're now going to try to take this national. In this section, they also exempt law enforcement officers. And they also talk about the dating of magazines where there would need to be date indications on these magazines so that they know which ones are pre-ban and which ones are post-ban. And then they also say that if you're in violation of this magazine possession law that they're gonna to try to put in effect through this bill, you can face a heavy fine or possibly imprisonment of no more than 10 years. So those are the main aspects of this gun control bill that they're trying to put forward. There's a lot more in this bill. Like I said, it's a hodgepodge of gun control. It has a ton of stuff in it, but those are kind of the major issues that stuck out to me when I read it. As I stated, this is a comprehensive bill that throws a ton of stuff into all one bill and just hope that maybe some of it sticks. They pretty much took a bunch of gun control bills that failed in the past and they just crammed them all into one bill. And now they're presenting it all in just one comprehensive bill that they really want to get passed. Now, I don't think something like this, like which is a giant hodgepodge of gun control will ever pass. I think things that are much more narrowly focused, maybe like a red flag law or universal background checks, I think those types of bills have a better chance of passing. But right now the likelihood is that maybe some of this stuff will pass the house, but then there is still that thing called the filibuster in the Senate. And in the Senate, they're gonna need 60 votes to break that filibuster. I don't think that any of this gun control stuff will actually pass in the Senate, but I would rather be safe than sorry. So please contact your local representatives let them know you oppose this bill and other gun control measures that the left and maybe those on the right who are trying to reach compromise on gun control are trying to be it passed. Let them know that you do not agree with any of this, that you do not want them to vote in favor of these gun control bills. And if they vote in favor of this gun control bill or other gun control bills, you will vote them out. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel algorithm rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So thank you so much for all of your support. And like I mentioned, if you're interested, you can pick up channel merch by using the link down below. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this is with Built Barm Scholars and this nation will maintain Barm Scholars.